What if I told you, you can block ads on your entire network with just a little Raspberry Pi device? I'm gonna show you how, let's get into it. What is up everybody, welcome back to the channel. Today, we are going to install Pi-hole on a little Raspberry Pi device. If you need a Raspberry Pi, I'll put a link in the description below. We're gonna go through the installation process. This video is not gonna talk about how to configure Pi-hole. We'll do a future video on that. If you want, just let me know down in the comments below. So let's get into it. The first thing we need to do is we need to download the Raspberry Pi OS imager. So head on over to raspberrypi.com slash software. And you can see here, I'm already on the page. Download the version for whatever computer you're on. I'm gonna do Windows. So go ahead and download it and start it up. Here we are at the Raspberry Pi imager and we need to choose our operating system. Your device really doesn't matter for this case. I have like an old Raspberry Pi, like I think it's a one maybe, or might even be a zero. I don't remember what it is. We're gonna choose our OS, and for this option, I'm gonna go headless, and that means you're not gonna have a monitor plugged into your Raspberry Pi or you know a keyboard or mouse. It's all going to be remotely managed, and we're gonna do the Raspberry Pi OS Lite, which makes it you know, unmanaged or headless. So go on down to where it says Raspberry Pi OS Other, and then I'm gonna do the top option, Raspberry Pi OS Lite 64. That's gonna do a port of Debian Bookworm with no desktop environment. So like I said, there's no GUI. So we'll choose that. Now we need to choose our storage device. For this is gonna be the SD card that you're going to you know, put into the Raspberry Pi. I have it plugged into the computer right back here and it's in a card reader. If you're in need of a card reader, I'll put a link in the description below. It's a great little USB-C card reader. I use it all the time for, you know, getting files off of like my GoPro or doing these videos or configuring Raspberry Pis with the micro SD cards. So we're gonna go ahead and choose our storage. And for this one, it's going to be the generic mass storage of a 64 gig card. Make sure you choose the correct storage because this will wipe clean whatever you are going to write to it. And then we'll go next. Let's edit some settings here. So in the set name box, you're going to set this to whatever you want the computer to be named on your network. So I'll just call this one Pi-hole too, because I already have another one set up. You'll go ahead and set your username and password here. This is how you're going to log into Linux or the Raspberry Pi OS. So whatever username you want there and whatever password, just make sure it's secure. I'm going to skip configure wireless LAN and that is because I don't want this working over wireless since this is going to be a key part of our network with you know everything kind of funneling through it to make sure we don't get ads and other stuff. I don't want to rely on wireless, so it's going to be plugged in. And then I'm going to do set locale settings. For me, it's Los Angeles. The keyboard is US. Set whatever you know your stuff is there. We'll click save. And then it says, would you like to apply that stuff to everything? You're going to do yes. And then it says, hey, we're going to erase whatever is on the, you know, the micro SD card. Are you sure you want to continue? Yes. And now it'll start writing to that micro SD card. It'll take a few minutes. And when it's done, we'll come on back. Pi OS is now written to that micro SD card. And what we're gonna do now is go ahead and take that card, put it in your Raspberry Pi and boot it up. Now we have our SD card in the Raspberry Pi and it's booting up. You can see it's going through all the installation and everything. And eventually here, we're gonna get to our login screen as you can see right here and we have an IP address. What you're gonna do here is log into your Raspberry Pi using the username and password that we set up back in the configuration process in the Raspberry Pi imaging software. So go ahead and log in now. Now that we're all logged in, we need to go ahead and do some updates on the Raspberry Pi. So we'll do sudo apt update. It's gonna download some packages, update the OS. And then once that's completed here, we'll go ahead and do the next part, which is the upgrade command. We'll clear the screen and then we'll do sudo apt upgrade. And it'll start doing all the upgrade of all the packages and stuff it downloaded. It says, um, it's gonna take up some more space. We wanna do yes. Now our Raspberry Pi is all updated and it's time to get Pi-hole installed. So let's go ahead and clear the screen once more. 
And what we want to do here is we're going to type in a curl command. So we'll curl dash SSL. And then we want to do the web address of where it's going to download. So it'll be install.py-hole.net. And then we're going to do pipe bash. And this is going to start installing and downloading the PyHole package, get it all installed. And when it's done and we get back to the section where we're going to do some configuration so we can log in, we'll go ahead and pick it right back up there. Welcome back to the PyHole installation. You can see here, we are now at the installer where we get to start setting everything up. As you can see, PyHole says this installer will transform your device into a network-wide ad blocker. And that's exactly what we want. Here's where you can send donations if you want to support the project. Highly suggest you do. It's a server, so it has to have a static IP address. There's a couple ways we can do this. I'm going to go the easy way, and I'm going to go into my router and find this device and manually set the IP address. Do that. And so that way, anytime the device starts up, my router goes, oh, that's my Pi hole server, this is the address it's supposed to have versus manually setting it here and then maybe forgetting what it is if you didn't document or, or anything. So that's called, you know, setting a DHCP server reservation. And that's like the third sentence down there. It talks about doing a uh, DHCP server reservation. So that's what I'm going to do. So we'll continue. And then we need to set what DNS server we want PyHole to use. So what this means is if for some reason PyHole goes, I don't know how to get to that website, it needs to go to whatever service here and say, hey, do you know how to get to Amazon or whatever? What I always tend to use is Google or Cloudflare. So for this example, let's go ahead and use Cloudflare. And then it relies on third party lists to block ads. And then you can go ahead and, you know, if you want to use this built-in Stephen Black's unified host list, you can click yes. If you click no, there's a whole bunch of different other stuff that you can add if you want to do um, add lists. So I'm just going to do yes just to have a, you know, this is a pretty good list. And then want to enable query logging. That's if you want to enable all the logging for different queries, et cetera. I'll do yes on that one. And then here we go. So we have set your privacy mode. So do we want to show everything? Do we want to hide domains, uh, hide domains, clients, anonymous mode? You can go and check the documentation there. I'm just going to have it show everything for, um, for this example. And then at the bottom, you can see we are starting to set up those different settings in the configuration and installation is now complete. You can see here, it says, this is how you access the server. You go to this IP address. We have not configured IPv6 and that's fine. Um, like it says, if you haven't done it already, you really should set a static IP address in your router or whatever you're using. If you want to do a DHCP reservation there, and then you'll head over to this address on the screen, colon 80 slash admin. And then that's your admin web page and your login password will be here on the screen. It's going to be randomized. Once we get logged into the dashboard, we can change those admin settings. So let's go ahead and reboot the server and get logged in to the PyHole dashboard. And here we are at the PyHole login page. We're going to go ahead and type in the admin password that it provided us earlier. I'm just going to copy and paste what it gave me. Now that you're logged in to your PyHole device, all there is to do is go into your router at home and set your PyHole server as your internal DNS server. And what that's going to do, it's going to tell all of the devices that are on your network when they need to get to a website, they're first going to go and ping your PyHole server. And that server is going to say, okay, you're trying to get to Amazon. This is how you do that. But I'm going to strip all the ads off and you're going to have a really great experience because you're going to have like no ads. There is something to note here is not all websites work great without ads. You know, some of them are set up to, Hey, we see there's an ad blocker or something in place and it won't let you access them. In those cases, you're going to have to, you know, whitelist those or add those into PyHole to be able to you know, skirt by those things. 
But one really cool thing about Pi Hole is, yes, it's an ad blocker, but it's not like your traditional ad blocker, like let's say for Chrome, where it's a, an extension plugin, right? This is straight native on your network, and it's going to, you know, download and strip all that stuff before it gives you that website. So you should have a much better experience, but just something to note that, you know, if for some reason you're trying to get to a website and it's just not working, um, try taking a look in the settings for Pi Hole and, you know, you might have to whitelist that domain. And there you have it. That is how you install Pi Hole on a Raspberry Pi. That was a nice little fun project. I was looking forward to doing that one for a while because my other Pi Hole instance is on a uh, virtual machine. It's in Docker. So if you want to know how to do that, just let me know. I can create a video on that. Just, you know, hit me up down in the comment section. If you have any questions on how I did some of this stuff, make sure you look at the description. I'll put commands that I used. It's really straightforward. And if you wanna see kind of a beginner's guide of how to use Pi Hole with some of the different features and you know stuff that I would suggest just as kind of a beginner home lapper, definitely let me know. We are building up our tech community on the Discord server. So head over to discord.gg havoc. And until next time, stay safe, have fun, and keep doing good. <laughs>